Holly and today I'm going to be giving you my top tips for how to get a level 7 in IBHL biology. So let's just get started. Basically what I did was I came up with my top 6 kind of thematic ideas for the things that I think that you should do if you want to get a level 7. Of course you don't have to do all of these things or you might do more than these things or just some of these things but these are kind of the main ideas in my opinion. The first thing you want to do is make consistent notes. So I'll show you what I used when I made notes. For the first semester of my HL Biology course, since it was divided into three semesters, I used these two smaller notebooks and I just made my notes like this. Pretty simple. And then for my last semester, I used this white lines notebook, which I would very, very strongly recommend. I liked it a lot because you can then just scan it. It's very nice to look at. All of these notes are in PDF format in the description box, so feel free to check those out because they might be useful to you. These are kind of my full notes that I would make during um, the evenings after my classes to really summarize everything and understand it in great amount of detail. Then secondly, what you're going to want to do is learn how to ask good questions. There are people that say that there are no stupid questions, but in my opinion, you can ask kind of annoying questions or questions that you could look up yourself or just generally stupid questions. So something that's really helpful is never start a question with, so what you're saying is, um, yeah, that just puts the blame on people. Always start a question with a question word, then look at like the main topics. What I have here is I summarized all the main topics that we use um, in HL Biology. So I have a copy of this also in the description box if you want to check it out. These are pretty much all of the main topics for all of the units. Kind of cool. Another thing that you can do is you can do it for a single unit. What I did here was I summarized the main topics for just our human physiology unit and then I came up with little questions that I put on the sides that I asked my teacher afterwards. So that makes it kind of easy to summarize your questions so that when you go up to someone saying I don't understand this or can you help me with this, you have some really specific questions that can help you understand what you're looking for. So that is, uh, yeah, that's that. The next thing that I would highly suggest is to utilize diagrams. And diagrams I didn't use as much at the beginning, but as I went through the course, I realized that diagrams are a really great way to show your understanding, especially in biology where things are very process-based and really tend to rely on diagrams. So I have this document as well, which has lots of blank diagrams. And then here it has the answers, which obviously in any of my notes that I'm showing you here, there could be mistakes in them. I'm almost 100% sure there are spelling mistakes, certain understanding mistakes that I had that either I corrected later on or I didn't correct. So of course there's that, but I made these cool things like this where I wrote down all the diagrams we need to know and then I would label them. Utilizing diagrams is especially helpful in this course, even in comparison to all the other IB courses that you're taking. So then tip number four is learning how to summarize and condense. Getting information down from a big amount of information to something really small and manageable is a really... Oh mon dieu, pourquoi s'il fait ça maintenant? My neighbor is just rolling along all the time. Okay. So something that I thought was kind of helpful was making little cards like this. So these are just kind of little topic index cards where I would write down the most important information and then I could just study from those and not actually study from those really big notebooks I have. So I did that for lots of different subjects. For example, I have one for all of cellular respiration on one page, which if you know much about cellular respiration, you know that it's kind of an intensive understanding and it takes a long time to understand what the heck is happening in all of these diagrams, Krebs cycle, link reaction, glycolysis, all of those different things. It's kind of hard to understand. So it, for me, it's really helpful to just make kind of like one sheets where I have all of it summarized on one page. Um, so I have all those linked in the description box as well in case you guys want to check those out. It'll all just be in a Google Drive folder with all of my full notes, diagrams, summaries, anything like that that I think that you guys would find helpful will be there so you guys can also achieve your level 7 if that's what you're looking for. Another cool way to summarize is also online. So you can use type notes and do little boxes and have diagrams that you just take from the internet. This kind of note can sometimes be more helpful depending on the type of biology, the type of diagrams you're looking at. Sometimes you don't want to just draw it over and over again or sometimes you just want to have diagrams from the internet so you can annotate it yourself later or whatnot. So that is all um, online as well. So I would suggest when you're summarizing either to do kind of like a mind map format or a small single page style, um, just try to get the information as condensed as possible. Another really good way that I like is doing this kind of thematic type note. So I made these the first semester I had biology, I summarized just the units I didn't get as much. So here for example we have all of cells in three pages 
and it just summarizes everything pretty nicely. Another thing that I think you guys will find really helpful is when you get near the end of the biology course, you take a little notebook like this, then you go through all of your intensive notes with this little notebook. And what you do is you just write down the things that you didn't know before or the things that you really want to remember that you think are super important and then that can help you to understand it better. For example, here I pasted in diagrams, I drew little arrows, I tried to understand things that I didn't already understand. Um, yeah, so that can be pretty helpful. You can also use cue cards or sticky notes to write down the things that you mess up on tests to try to go over those things and then doing lots of practice questions. So practice questions are very important. Do lots of practice questions and look at past papers. Of course, when you're in the course doing tests and stuff like that, just look at lots of practice questions. Don't do all the past papers then. I don't think that's the best use of your time at that point, but by the time you get to the end of the course, when you're really into the studying for exams, past papers are your best friends. So this is what I would do. Basically, I would take a past paper, and then I would look at just the long answer questions. So sometimes I would do the full past paper, but if you know what the paper two looks like for biology, they have lots of long answer questions and you can just do the long answer questions. So I would just do all the questions like this, where I answer them and then I go through afterwards with a red pen or a colored pen and I write the things that I didn't get and then I highlight all the things that are really important. So of course I pretty much highlighted all of it, but that's basically how that goes. This is what it looks like when you have a past paper. It's just a series of questions and I would answer all of them even though on the exam you actually just choose two of them because if you're prepared to answer all of them that's that's pretty awesome so yeah this is kind of the format that I would take when I was answering questions when I was practicing and then one other thing that's pretty useful is to use the syllabus so the syllabus tells you everything that you need to know in the IBHL biology course or if you're taking SL biology that works as well and what you're gonna do is you're gonna go through the syllabus and it has lots of points that you're just gonna read off aloud and then you're gonna expand upon it because if you can just expand upon it and talk about various things or use one of the keywords that's in the sentence in the bullet point then you really understand what you're talking about you can talk about it with a friend that's in the course with you or you can get your parents or your siblings or really anyone to just read off one of those bullet points and then you expand upon it aloud and you just talk about it. Every time I had a test in biology for the entire three semesters, I would go through the syllabus and I would get my mom or someone else to read off those bullet points and then I would talk about it orally and just try to go through everything I know and that was really helpful especially if I didn't know something then I could highlight that one specific bullet point and go over that. So I would also really 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 highly suggest looking at the syllabus while you're studying for biology because it was very 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 helpful. So that'll also be on the Google Drive link in the description box. I really hope you guys found this helpful. Um, I'm going to kind of go over all of the main tips again. So what you're going to want to do to get a 7 in IBHO biology is first of all you're going to make consistent notes. Second of all, you're going to learn how to ask good questions. Third, use diagrams. Fourth, summarize and condense all of the information that you learn. Fifth, you're going to want to use past papers and do lots of practice questions. And sixth is to use the syllabus. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really hope that you enjoyed it. Um, if you have any other questions about how to study for HL Biology, leave them in the comments below. It's a really, really good course. I enjoyed it a lot. Also in IB Biology, you have the IA, which I talk about a lot more in my video about IA, so I'll link that in the description box as well. I hope you guys really enjoyed this video, and I will see you next time. Bye!